Hey everybody, this is Gamer Junkie. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. So, I was originally meant to upload a theory video yesterday, but I got busy, so hopefully it's uploaded today. And that theory video was about the new character in the Life is Strange Forget Me Not book series called Lily. Now, Lily, I was going to theorise who she was, what her powers were, which I can still do, but I've had to remove just a few of them few of my theory videos because I got some new information, shout out to Dr. Daniel, about who Lily is, what her power may be, and what's going to happen in the next issue of Forget Me Not. Now next month is going to be the first issue of Life is Strange Forget Me Not, it's coming out December, and issue 2 is going to be coming out January 10th. So um, as you all know I like to read the comics. And I always upload a non-commentary version for you to enjoy. But I don't know how I'm going to feel about this one, because in issue 2, it, um, what, we find out about, um, what we find out about Lily is quite inter interesting. I've got the description here. I'm, I'm going to read it and then go over it. Lily has somehow taken on the painful memories of dozens of other people. Tensions rise as the free trace the origins of each memory. Steph's past returns to haunt her present, and Alex, desperate to protect her, shouldn't shoulders the burden of her grief. And in the depths of a dusty comic book shop, Alex will be forced to learn again how much the truth can hurt. So, um, what, so what's happening is, um, if you remember in Life is Strange, True Colors, when Steph sends someone's emotions, you know, it's got those little memory spots where she can hear a memory, but it appears in this, um, Lily is taking painful memories, she's able, like, I don't know if she's willingly doing this, or if it's, like, so she's somehow absorbing them, with, like, she's not doing it intentionally, you know, I don't know how that's gonna happen, but one of the memories that I'm very interested to find out as well, and just, I don't know if I'm looking forward to it, is, about a character known as Kate Marsh. Now, obviously I don't know, don't need to explain who she is. We all know Kate, she was a fan favorite in Life is Strange, and she was originally, I don't know if any of you know this, she was only meant to, her last appearance was towards the end of episode two, but because she was so popular, uh, she got an extra scene, and that was the hospital scene where Max would go and visit her. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and this was like all done when they had all the episodes planned out, they just added that for fans. Now I want to make this very clear, I do, I cannot say with 100% certainty that Lily is seeing Kate's memories, maybe she's experiencing the memories of someone else who saw Kate die. And this brings into question, when did Kate die? Because as we all know, this comic book series is tying into Life is Strange. Now, Life is Strange, as we all know, the comic book, like, canonical choice is Sacrifice Arcadia Bay. So that means that, um, Kate would have had to die when the, either the storm destroyed Arcadia Bay, or she committed suicide. Now the thing is, this also poses, like, a problem, like, because it's a big problem for me because this girl Lily, she's experiencing the memories of either, as I said, either Kate or someone who saw Kate die. But one of the variant covers for issue one of Forget Me Not is we see um, Steph and Alex at a campfire with Rachel and Chloe, and that's the timeline that Max Max spends most of her time with, you know, after, towards the end of issue 4, she goes to this alternate timeline, and she spends most of her time there with a Rachel Amber that's alive, and is dating Chloe, and, um, that's actually a problem, because that means the storm never hit, so, how exactly did Kate die? That, like, at least the way I'm interpreting it is, she must have committed suicide, I mean, that's really the only logical explanation, because you remove Max from the equation, um, and Rachel, Amber, and Chloe have left for Los Angeles, like, you remember in Before the Storm, 
um, Rachel and um, Rachel and Chloe were originally going to leave and go Seattle or something. No, no, sorry, it was Los Angeles. So it's been a while since I played the game. So let's say canonically they did this. They've left. Um, they've left Arcadia Bay, and even though Max isn't there, Jefferson is with Nathan, and they're still working on the dark room. So I guess I can still. I guess I can see that happening. The dark room happens. And Kate will end up um, committing suicide because of uh, bullying and harassment she's getting. So I can see that in this timeline. That's really how it will make sense for me. But if you're bringing in the storm, it just doesn't because if Max was because there's a lot of inconsistencies with how Max ended up in this new timeline with Rachel and Chloe. What happened to the original version of her? I've covered it before. It's just a bit of a like mind maze for me. But I am interested in seeing how um, how it's done. I just hope it's done right. You know, these days comic books have all this political bullshit. I'm not a fan of. I don't like it. So I want to be entertained, not pandered to. You know. Uh, but anyways, I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just here to make a theory video. Hope you all enjoyed this one, and next month, I hope you're ready for Life is Strange, Issue 1. Forget me not. Uh, this is Tall Game Junkie, signing off.